Okay, so we're now at the stage where we can go ahead with our recovery plan, our test failover and our cleanup was successful. So the situation I suppose that you'd be in to uh, have to use the recovery, um, you know, you're going to have two sites, obviously, let's say there is some sort of disaster, like a flood or an earthquake or whatever, um, affecting access on your primary site. So you would have your DR site set up and um, other employees jump in their cars and go over to the other site. And then basically, you know, the VMware administrator gets that call from his boss saying to fail over uh, the site replication. Now, so let's just, um, I hit the button there, but there's a few things we have to explain before we go ahead. So this, these two options here, you know, before you actually get past this stage would take a, a huge amount of planning um, by the storage and IT administrator. Um, the two options basically, you know, because you see, since you're using mirror view or any other type of replication that you're using, um, obviously that the data has been replicated from one site to the other so they're not always in a fully synchronized state um, depending on the the type of mirror view replication you're using that there could be an interval a couple of hours at a time between the full sync um, let's just flick over to Unisphere and have a look at that so when you're setting up a uh, mirror view, I uh, just have the wizard open there. You can see that there's two different options, asynchronous and synchronous. They both have their pros and cons. Synchronous uh, looks like the better option, but it takes more overhead and um, lower, sorry, uh, smaller distances that it can run across as well. The asynchronous option would then be used for uh, sites, uh, greater distances between the two of them, but um, the actual speed of the link would be a lot slower or the speed of the link that is available. Now, this basically, if we were to select asynchronous, so that this is the, um, you know, the, the point that's gonna need a lot of work when it's being kind of set up initially, because, um, you know, in, in our kind of test environments here, we just have, you know, uh, two VMs and they've got one VMDK each and one R RDM each. So, you know, synchronizing the, um, those LUNs from the production VNX to the other VNX, you know, it only takes a couple of minutes. If you have a full production environment with thousands of VMs and those LUNs are replicated from, you know, uh, production to DR, um, this sync interval, you know, but by the time it actually makes a full sync between the two LUNs, that could be several hours. Um, so, you know, obviously during the SRM setup, there would have to be a lot of testing to see exactly how long it would take, depending on the type of mirror view that you're using for the full sync to complete. So let's flick back to um, SRM there. And so basically, like once you've done all that testing and you kind of have an idea in your head, you know, which mirror view option you should be using or how long it's going to take, depending on the situation that, that you're in, the disaster recovery, um, you know, you, you have two options. One, um, you want to sync all the changes. You want to keep all the changes between the last full sync uh, over to your DR site or your boss just rings you up and says get those VMs up as soon as possible and that's where you select this option here so basically um, it's not there could be data loss you know if you use this option it may not include all the data that you have on your production site this option here theoretically you should be able to keep all the, the data that you do have um, on your production site but obviously it's going to take a lot longer to get those VMs back up and running. So that's the trade-off. So in this case, um, obviously you take that, you have to select that because there could be a, a data loss depending on the option that you take. So for this option, we're just gonna select the planned migration and let's go ahead and start that off. Okay, so it's now just uh, synchronizing the storage again from production to the DR side. Uh, while it's doing that, let's quickly switch over to U Unisphere. These are the four LUNs. Actually, I could ignore that one. It's this one, this one, these four here uh, that I've set up for our lab. And you can see that they're all, all the role of all our the mirrors is primary on the Athena side. So this guy is um, got the production data on them. And obviously uh, we're gonna see that this state has changed uh, during the, the site recovery process. It's gonna be a pretty similar setup to the, the test failover. We're just gonna see the, the data being synced. Uh, it's gonna shut down the VMs on the production side. 
So we won't see a whole lot happening on Pandora for a few minutes, I think. So a quick look on the host side. Nothing of any major interest there. Okay, so it's now starting to shut down the VMs on the production side. So we should see some activity there. These guys, yeah, you can see the VMware tools has kicked in there and uh, begun to shut down the VMs. Okay, let's have a look at the state of the VMs now. So those VMs are now shut down. I want to see various other activity kicking in there. Now the placeholder VMs have been put in place. Let's flick over to Pandora. Placeholder VMs are still in place on the DR side. I assume there's still synchronization going on. So at this stage here, it's going to fully synchronize the storage so <clears throat> that there'll be no other changes lost from the production side over to the DR side. So you can see this is kind of going through pretty quickly since we've only got two VMs, but you know you can imagine if there's, you know, several hundred VMs to be uh, replicated between the two sites, then, you know, the RPO and the RTO objectives uh, become, you know, a lot more important. In exactly how much time you can uh, allocate to the to the actual um, failover. Let's have a look on the ESX side, see if there's anything interesting happening there. No, nothing much yet. We'll go back to Unisphere now and we'll check the status of the LUNs, see if anything's changed on that side. These are all still showing up as primary. And down here you can see as well that Athena is the primary image, Pandora DR side is the secondary, should be the same for all of them really. And we should see some changes soon. So there we go, changing recovery site storage to writable. Because the replicated LUNs that are presented to the Pandora host on the DR side are obviously read only. And then at this stage, obviously, <clears throat> they're becoming read write so they can power on the VMs. Let's go back to the array, have a look. So we can see there, there's some changes happening now. Athena is now becoming the secondary image, it's, and uh, Pandora has been promoted. Should be the same for all the other ones as well. Okay. Actually, I think in our test, we were probably only using these three. Yeah, two RDMs and one VMFS data store. So you can actually ignore these two for now. So the VMs are now being powered on on the DR side. You can see it there, they're probably up and running already, but we're just waiting for the VMware tools. You can also see here that um, the LUN has got the original name, but it's been resignatured. So it's got that uh, snap hyphen UUID. Let's go back to the ESX on Pandora, see if there's anything happening there. What I'll do actually is Okay, 2110. So there we go. That's the, the LUNs being uh, resignatured and mounted. One or more L LVM devices have been discovered on Snap successfully resignatured. That's what we want to see. And the recovery is now complete. So we should see our VMs up and running on the DR side. Okay, we can see our VMs up and running now on the DR site. Um, there's a couple of more steps um, involved if we wanted to get those uh, VMs reprotected and fails back to the production site, uh, which we'll be looking at in the next uh, YouTube clip.